Now we'll set up a room to move around in, and the way I've seen people do this sort of thing before is to create separate objects for their various wall pieces and then build a room out of it. So for example, they might have a horizontal wall, a vertical wall, a corner piece, and then they would just build their room like that. But that's really inefficient because you can end up with hundreds of objects, each of which has actions that it's trying to perform, and so that can really bog down your game. A better way of doing this is to create a single wall object like I've done here and use what's called a tile set to overlay a graphic on top of it. So I'm just going to get rid of all this stuff. Close the room. Over here in the assets I have two backgrounds. I have a BG grass which is going to be the main background and is 640 by 480 the size of the room. But then I've got this BG tile set which is much smaller. It's 96 by 64 and is going to consist of six different tiles, 32 by 32 each. I've got a cement block here, a junk block, and four different dirt tiles. Now I've created this as a background, but I want it to be a tile set, and the way to do that is to come to this checkbox, Use as Tile Set. Just hit that little box and it brings up a bunch of other tile properties. First of all, I'm going to turn off the Tile Horizontal and Tile Vertical, and now you'll notice in the image here, the background has been sliced up into these little squares. By default, the tile width and tile height is set to 16, but the tiles in our room are 32, so let's go ahead and change that. And now you'll see my image has been cut up into the six tiles that I want to use. There are other settings here, such as offset and separation, and these are used when you leave a little bit of space in between the sections of the image that you want to use. And that can actually be important for games where the background is moving or is going to resize, because what will happen here is that if you don't leave separation, then you can get these little gap lines between the tiles on the background. Since this game is going to be a static background of one size, I'm not going to concern myself with it. But in later games, I'll show you how this works. So let's go ahead and close this. And now let's reopen the room level one. So first I'm going to put in the grass background, come over to backgrounds. We don't need this draw background color. We do want this to be visible when the room starts, and I'm going to select the BG grass. To build the room using the tile set, I need to come over to the tiles tab, and you will see I now have the tile set image. And if I click on certain parts of it, you can see that I am selecting the sections that have been cut apart. It's getting kind of cut off here, so if I shrink the thumbnail a little bit, we can come down here and see that we have a few special commands for the tile set, but we also have a layer. Now this layer is going to act differently than the background layer, and we can add or change as many as we want. The default one is set at layer 1 million. This will appear above the background layer, but below the object on screen. So I'm going to go ahead and select the concrete, and I'm going to use this as my outer wall. Now if you hold down the shift key, you can sort of paint on screen the various tiles. I'll also put on some of my dirt. This I'm going to put on sort of piecemeal because I don't want this same four bits of tile repeating themselves, especially these rocks. I only want these to appear in certain places. I also have these junk walls, which I'm going to use as internal walls. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and create a very simple room. Okay, so this will work well enough, but it's still not a proper room yet because these tiles are not solid. We're just going to end up driving right over them. This is where the wall object comes in. So we'll come over to our objects, and with the object wall selected, I'm going to place it on top of these tiles, and then I'm going to stretch it out where I need it. And so just going around, I'm going to overlay the object on top of the various things that I want to be solid. Okay, and now that that's done, we need to actually turn off the object wall because we don't want this orange in our actual game. So I'm going to close the room, reopen the object wall, uncheck visible, close that, and let's test. Okay, so I can move around the room and everything that I bump into is solid. Now that our room is ready, we need an object to push around. 
So we'll get into that next.